I don't usually do this, but somebody sent me this uh, prayer of Joe Wright from the Central Christian Church that he used for legislators, and I thought on election day this might not be such a, a bad thing to ponder, and maybe tonight, as we pray for ourselves, we may need to pray for all those who seek uh, elected office in any way. Search us, O oh God, and know our hearts. We've ridiculed the time-honored values of our forefathers, and we call it enlightenment. We polluted the air with profanity and pornography, and we call it freedom of expression. We've covered, coveted our neighbor's possessions, and we call it ambition. We've abused power, and we call it politics. We've neglected to discipline our children, and we call it building self-esteem. We've lost our spiritual equilibrium and reversed our values. So, Heavenly Father, we come before you today asking forgiveness, but most of all, seeking your guidance and direction. And so we do exactly that as we pray for each of you gathered here for this meeting and for all those who have been seeking public office, those who received votes and those who didn't receive votes today, asking you, God our Father, to be with us in everything that we do so that every prayer of ours, every work that we do, truly begins with you and in you comes to a happy end. Amen. Thank you. We will open the budget hearing. The 2015 budget. Does anyone have any comments? The 2015 budget. Last chance. Nothing's changed there, has it? No. It's been published. We can't change it after it's been published. We made the corrections and we. You already what approved. You, yeah, yeah, you approved what was done. Motion to accept. Second. Well, we don't we, vote on we, that yet. We're going to close the budget hearing. I'll refer the citizens. Closed. Open the regular meeting for August 5th, 2014. <coughs> uh, any additions to the agenda? I have some. We had, uh, I need to discuss or more questions on um, when Aaron Rudy is promoted to sergeant in reference to the uh, raise he was given. So, are you wanting the executive session? No. I'd like to have 10 minutes too as executive session, Kevin, with the council for personnel.
Saturday was August it? fifth? No. What day? August sixteenth. August sixteenth. August sixteenth from six a or six PM to twelve PM. Uh, your second or AM power. Uh, to basically close it off at the alley of the post office. West side of the alley, straight across <coughs> to give access to the deal. To exchange. From voting because I have a possibility that I have a conflict here. Okay. All those in favor? All opposed? Four of them. All those Okay. Amy Collins, 4th Avenue entrance. Okay. Um, most of you know, uh, maybe Sherry doesn't, uh, but Jill and I at one time had talked about doing some landscaping out of the entrance on 4th Street. And while we've been doing a few things through the holidays, we haven't really um, put much together yet. Grace is going to present um, something through 4-H and we have decided to kind of team up with them to help get this project off the ground. So I'm going to let him talk, and then after he's done, we have some drawings for you to look at, and we'll kind of discuss a little more after that. What it is, is it's a thing called 48 Hours of 4-H. They come out up with it this year, and uh, it's just getting 4-H members together, and pretty much what we're doing is it's 48 hours of helping the community and doing some type of community service. It's not only for 4 agers Anybody can help. Uh, but what I'm looking is uh, uh, two or three uh, city council members to be on this committee. I have some. I have Jill and my mom, and then I'm going to get some 4 agers and then. But anybody can help. It's I could get school, people, school clubs, and a bunch of community people to help. And, but here's what I'm asking from you guys: two or three people to serve on the committee uh, from the council, and then a commitment from as many to three hours of your time, just some volunteers uh, on August or October 11th and 12th. A commitment to install and maintain the drip irrigation system. And once uh, the committee is formed, we will develop a plan to uh, implement the project, ob obtain bids and plant materials, uh, and a retaining wall, and secure donations. And like I said, it'll take, it'll be October 11th through the 12th, just one weekend. And it's open to anybody in the community who wants to help. But we have some drawings that we. Forty-eight hours of 4-H is a statewide event, and they're trying to get as many people to volunteer their time over that weekend um, across the state of Kansas. And like Grayson said, it doesn't just involve 4-H, they're just using 4-H as a way to get people involved in the community. Um, this is the entrance on the north side. Um, and this is just a vision of what could be. I don't know um, if it's anything you're interested in. Uh, what we did, we went out and measured and um, the retaining wall is a repetition of what is around the square. Um, by putting the curves in the wall, it kind of softens the area up a little bit. 
um, those curves, or the retaining wall could be made out of landscape, pavers, stones, or we could get bids here locally for a brick wall. Um, the letters themselves are a little low on the sign if you wanted to plant anything in front of it, so we could move the existing letters up so it reads straight across the wall. We put some plants behind the wall that would be nice evergreen uh, to kind of set the sign off. And then we did some plantings in front of the retaining wall. On the ends of the retaining wall, you'll see that little square there. We even thought about maybe Carol Long making some tiles to put on the ends to kind of coincide with what they did um, down here, downtown. Um, so it would just kind of repeat what's been done down here, but maybe dress it up a little bit, use some landscape lighting. The south side's a little tougher because we don't have as much space there, but um, we had thought about possibly doing some flagpoles or just some smaller plantings to dress it up. It doesn't have to be an exact repetition of the north side. Um, this is, this is the grand scale, probably. Um, if you did not, or if the committee that we form would not want to do something like that, that is perfectly fine. This was just, this is just to get us started. Um, so that's really why we want a committee, is to kind of guide us. Um, and then we're, our hopes are the weekend of October 11th to 12th is to get as many people to volunteer three hours a time or more um, of labor to help us make this a realization. Amy, will that start at a certain time and then you just, there will be just a turnover of people there? Then, yeah, um, we do have kind of a timeline of implementation um, and that's why we're here tonight and then there's steps that we're going to follow. Um, but as far as that weekend, I'm not exactly sure how we'll do it, but if we have other groups, school groups or community groups that want to help, we would rotate them in and out. And it could be volunteering anything from serving water or snacks to helping bring in a load of dirt or spread some mulch. It, it's a big scope. <laughs> and so we're going to have to really be organized, I think, um, which is what we're trying to trying to get there. Um, we just left the existing entrance sign there. There's nothing that says it has to, to remain, but we thought since it was, it was there, we'd work with it rather than against it. So. Um, oh, yeah, and everyone would get a picture uh, that works on the project, so everybody volunteering their time that weekend would, would be sporting a T-shirt that would be either blue or white with that logo on it and probably say volunteer on the back. So. There's your perk. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jill, do you have anything to say? I was just uh, going to ask council if you remember right a year ago when I came in and asked if you guys would be willing to um, put some money up against it. Um, at the time, you said yes, and so I just wanted to recheck to see if you guys were still on board with us with that. The, we, I don't know. I know you all have noticed when Amy and myself and families have helped us do the entrance during the fall time. We've had a lot of good comments on that and right now there's lots of big weeds growing up in front of the Welcome to St. John and it just looks real lovely right now. But anyways, back to um, the good comments when we do decorate it up, people have told us it looks really, really good. So anyways, I was just asking council to see if you would be willing to um, still stick with that dollar figure, and I think it was five hundred dollars, and I don't know if it was five hundred five hundred dollars all together, or if it was five hundred on each side. John will just have to look. Yeah, and I think also they um, had made a motion to provide water out there. Yes. So um, that part was already has already been right uh, done. Yeah, it's yes. been approved for that. Yes. Have you put any pencil to this to know kind of the total dollar amount? No, because it's going to change. I am guessing when we get the committee together, 
um, if there are any other thoughts or ideas, it could change. And then with that committee, we'd go out and get bids on the different, on the plant material in the retaining wall. And we did talk to Mel and Jana about right of way and uh, what? the state. Yeah. yeah. They talked to KDOT, and then I asked Mel about the irrigation system, if they'd be willing to install and maintain that. Um, and I think, Mel, did you think that would be all right? So uh, initially, it was just, you know, we were going to put water on both sides, get her into the road, and like a, maybe a yard hydrant or whatever. But the, the problem with that is, you know, people having the time to go out and water, remember water. And so the, if you're going to go to all this trouble, the best thing an irrigation system that would come on take care of it without you know, factor or something you want to do. So, so if you have a factor down there too, that just still pulls it up to shenanigans and what like to do. Right. So well, if you have hoses that, out there, they're gone. You know. so, you'd have to keep them, a lock on that property pipe, but here yeah, regardless, it's just more than you think it's just time to do. Whose responsibility is going to be to maintain this after it's done? Well, our hope is there would not be much maintaining to do um, with the plantings that are there. And, um, you know, I don't know who does the mowing right now, if that's the city or, if, you know, I guess the city does their right of way. And then there would be mulch and stuff like that down, Bobby. Yeah, mulch and stuff. But, I mean, maintaining it, I'm pretty sure as far as groups or Amy and myself could. As far as maintaining it, like first thing in the spring, getting ready for Jubilee, I would guess since 4-H helps with the square, um, we could include that as well. I don't want to say long term 4-H is going to do that because I don't know what they'll decide to do year to year, but I would guess the next few years probably wouldn't be an issue, but they would have to decide that. I can't decide that for them. But, um, Are you planning on putting any kind of... Uh plastic down or to keep the grass from coming through it or what? Well, there would be landscape fabric that would have to go down. And then um, depending on what, you know, the if the committee decided they didn't want much planting, this would totally change, you know. Um, if they wanted one tree, I guess that's what we would go with. So, but we would want to do it right. We would want to put down the landscape fabric. We would want to make sure we use root stimulator on all the plants and, and go with either some landscape river rock, um, mulch, something like that. Well, Jill knows as well as I do, anything you've got, you're going to have grass growing around. Well, you will, because it blows in, yeah. and and you do. But our hope is to put in plants that are going to survive the harsh winds and weather, um, things that aren't going to take just a ton of water. A lot of these are xeriscaping plants. Um, so. And there, there's not much maintenance to what I have in there right now. They are all kind of perennial. Um, they're zoned for our area, and there's not a lot of maintenance to those plants specifically. So, but again, the committee would have to decide. I mean, it could totally change. Um, what we're hoping to do is get together, make some decisions, and then bring it back to you for approval and, and then go get donations and that type of thing. So we're just in the starting phase. So we could discuss it this evening about giving you two council members for yep. your committee. That would work. And then um, Grayson's going to present it at the next 4-H meeting and then probably present it to some community groups around town as well. So. How many times a year are you going to meet? Well, this just, it ends October 12th, yeah. so hopefully two or three and we're done. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank Drawings, drawings, or do you want them? I don't care. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Contractors brought up uh, an issue that we had. New water was going somewhere. Didn't know how bad it was, and, uh, and then uh, we called Mel out, and he timed it. And realized that's that's a lot of water that's leaving. Uh, and for about 10 days, uh, we had that going on under the building. The water never did show up anywhere. Uh, that water line runs right by a sewer line that heads north. Uh, our best guess is that down that sewer line and left that way, but nothing down in the basement, nothing bubbling up outside. So anyway, we got that shut off. The water line's been replaced. Um, and uh, that's a, a lot of dollars of water we put in the ground. Uh, I'm here to ask for forgiveness for some of that bill. Um, I understand that you know there's costs tied up in, in getting that water to us. So I would not expect it to city of St. John would be paying for our mistake. But, uh, there's some revenue that goes into the city's budget from that. And I don't know what kind of dollar amount that is or kind of percentage. Uh, so it, it really helps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so was there not a meter reading between you're expecting uh, $800 one month and 900 the other? We, yeah, it was it was red, and then Donna, Donna had us go over and reread the meter, and that's when because it could have been a slower leak at one point, and then really picked up speed because the meter was turning real quickly when I went over there, and you know, it, that's that's when I timed it. Saw like twenty thousand gallons a day. Yeah, we're yeah, seventeen hundred dollars for. Normal monthly bill is 120 on that meter. So we don't use a, a whole heck of a lot of water out of there. So, again, I understand. I, I would expect that the council would forgive all of that amount, some percentage of it. Did you go in once you figured out how many gallons are going through? Did you shut it off at that shut point? Shut off, right? It was at, yeah, that okay. way that was out. It shut off. Any other questions for Josh? on the situation is that every taxpayer in town, in town is going to pay for that. I don't know if can of worms and say that everybody gets a water leak and gets forgiveness. It's a, well, that's, that's my belief too, but I mean, you know what I mean? The, the two kind of go hand in hand. So, I mean, but I mean, that's why I was asking earlier what it actually costs a gallon of water so we knew which at this point at this exact point we don't honestly know but she thinks she can find it out two two days pretty quickly yeah, yeah. now that we've been on the nitrate removal plan it's been up and running for one full year we can figure those costs for the full year uh, would be way more accurate being average than a full right. year so i think we can probably for the next couple of days have as far as an approximation of what our costs are. There's always variables that we haven't got a better We should have a pretty good estimate. You guys want to wait and make a decision on the 19th? Well, I mean, my thought would be I'd really like, I'd really like to know the actual cost. Right, right. And, and if, I mean, if, if we need to delay paying the bill, I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, we can make sure they don't get a or anything like that. Or if you pay the first bill and we, then we 
if there is one, if, if there, if we decide there's one adjustment, we can correct it on the second bill, or how you guys want to do it? Yeah, the only thing with adjusting that kind of money, it's a, it's kind of a crazy thing for her system, unless we're just going to reimburse, write them a check back. So either we wait to decide what you're going to actually ask them to pay, or we'll have some extra work. It would be a lot easier if we just don't Hold do on. nothing until we figure it out. Right, I think it would be in our books as well. It would be the thing that would be the easiest thing to do at that point. Yeah. yeah, and I would propose if we could, you know, the, the last, uh, over the last year, you know, I think our highest bill was about uh, you know, $308. Pay that amount plus whatever the cost is above that. Because we, we did use some water. But we did some water. Right. And again, I know you got to find that percentage. So. So, yeah, I mean, I'd like I said, I'd at least like to know our costs before we try and come up with it. Yeah, I'd like to see numbers first. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other citizen comments? You were approved. Okay. As long as you know that. Okay. No more citizens' comments. We move to the consent agenda. Approve the minutes for the regular meeting, 7-15-2014. I think there was maybe a adjustment to that. You got a, it's all right on the minutes that you have now. But oh, yeah. Yeah. I did. I will tell you what the change was. I gave you a copy of that. Uh, the motion. To have the mayor uh, draft a letter. I didn't have the mayor draft the letter, I just had a motion to draft the letter, so I just added the mayor in that motion. That's the only thing that I changed since you saw the mayor packets. Approve the appropriation ordinance 801-2014 in the amount of $11,271.15. Approve appropriation ordinance 815 2014 for the amount of 126,805.40. Approve the updates to the swimming pool manual for July 15th, 2014 meeting. Second. Have any other questions or comments? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? <coughs> okay, Mr. Chesney. Uh, we've had off and on at different times expiries in regard to, uh, you know, we've had people in town that have sold barbecue, you know, we've had uh, recently an inquiry about bringing like a uh, uh, food trailer into town to set up. The issues we've had in the past with that is, you know, when, when we first originally people were setting up on the square, it, it blocked parking for certain businesses. And we, you know, of course, you hear, well, these people aren't paying taxes, they're from out of town, taking away businesses from other restaurants or whatever. But other, on the plus side, we've had people say it's great to have a variety along those lines. The thing that we're wanting to, we really don't have anything on our ordinance books or anything in the code about this. So uh, we're just, you know, people have gotten permission, you know, they've set up over the old board garage, and that's been on private property, which has taken care of the parking issues and whatnot. Uh, you know, we've had questions about, or have they been inspected? Are they, you know, up to code as far as all the health requirements? And so we're just wanting to get some guidance from the council so we can answer questions as they come in. If, you know, if the council does not want it, anyone setting up on the city right away and they have to you know, seek a, a private place to set it up, then you know, they can kind of self-govern themselves. And part of it, as far as that goes, take care of the parking issues. 
but you, know, you can still do a jurisdictional thing as far as you know, still have to maybe buy a permit for or make sure they're current on the health. But John when this came up pretty recently, John went out on the list serve from the city clerks to other cities to see what they would do. And so I'm gonna let her share what she found. We just I I got responses from clear across the board, all the way from they had pages of regulations, and that was a small town, and to Andover that said we just decided it was too much to deal with because of state regulations and stuff, so we said not on city property, they have to find pro private property to do it, and it released them of any kind of liability. So it's, it's across the board from $10 for an annual permit to $100 a weekend. You know, so it, it, it's really pretty much open. The only thing that I would suggest is if you decide to let them be on city property is that we definitely require um, their certifications and stuff from the state as far as food vendors and their operations, state sales tax registrations and things like that. I, I do remember one other thing is that one town had a permit fee for if you lived in town it was one. Yes, that's and if right. you were out of town, I think it was like three hundred and sixty dollars and if you lived in town it was a lot less. Like so <laughs> to, to take care of, you know, any argument as far as whether or not paying taxes. So it's just a cost the board and then, you know, if we decide to let them do it on city right away or Brown Square or wherever it would be, it would need to be a designated area that you know just for the least amount of impact on the that we've heard a lot on that, so. And how many do you want to accommodate at one time? Right. You know, there's just, it, you start thinking about it, if you had three or four food trucks to show up, well, you know, that's yeah. like crazy, but what if? You know, so we have to have some kind of preparation um, if we would have something like that. Are we only going to accommodate two? Do we have to turn around, turn away to two, you know, or whatever? a lot to think about and yeah, the, the easy way to do it would be you can correct me not to be wrong is it has to be on private property you can have as many as you want you said the hand over yeah it was so hand over having control said. over because it, it would be on yeah. private property you would have no control you would not uh, i mean it would be the same as a restaurant anywhere it there, would be up to the property owner to work something out with the vendor as far as if they want to hook up to their electricity or water. When they were setting up over here on the Ford garage, we let them use the plug-in that we used for Jubilee and we could charge maybe like nine dollars a day and we could adjust that for them. Had some guy be body on generator or something you want to do. So it just depends on what you want to do, but we just had enough inquiries and we just we just feel like we want to be able to answer people when they ask us. So I'd agree with Kevin. We should make it work. I mean that wipes our hands of it. The only thing is if you put that on the books, what else exceptions we've got to put in there for the Jubilee and all that other stuff. Because you're going to have to have an exception in there for special functions. I mean, you just ain't going to be able to say there can't be one to come in and own a private property. So, yeah, you would have to have your motion state. And maybe for special um, circumstances, that has to be approved by the council. You know, and so presumably we just have to, just like we do the cereal malt beverage license, we get that approved every year. We can approve having vendors on the square. Up, <clears throat> I agree with that, that's part of me. But you're going to have to, like I say, you're going to have to make some provisions for that. Yeah. And if somebody else is having a, a, an event, you know, yeah. they're not CIP or whatever wants to put on an event and they want to have vendors that they could come to the council and ask for permission at that time. Just curious, so that wouldn't. Uh, Effect like any church group or something wanting to come in and serve hamburgers or something on the square or something like that, would it? Well, I mean, that's it. 
Which what I guess ain't a big deal. We'd have they'd have to approve it. They just have to approve it. Yeah. Yeah. They just have to go for us. So. Question I was going to bring up was just like the next what the August the fifteenth or fifteenth or whatever it is, the block square, whatever that food over there. But they don't sell it. But and, and they did come and ask permission to be to use the square in that event. Of course, you approved it before any motions taking right. place today. But, I mean, but if they were going to have vendors, then they could have that approved at the same time. So making it now, you could, I mean, I don't think that affects what you've already made the decision on. But I don't think they're having food vendors, are they? Yeah, yeah. they're serving food. Vendors. Yeah. I make a motion to, as far as custom vendors coming in, that they have to be on private property and off city right away. Any other, I mean, in, unless they have. You want a motion for that? Permission? Or, yeah, or you want to consensus? You want to draw it up and then draw it up and we'll approve the, Yeah, we can okay. do that. Yeah, okay. let's do that. Well, we don't have to do anything right now. I'll draw if everybody have, agrees to that. Yeah. I'll draw something so you have a motion to go by and yeah. we'll go from there on the next meeting. We'll probably have to draw it or whoever else look at it or draw it. I'd say we've got one bidder right now that's kind of waiting on this decision so I can pass it along. We'll have to go by the call. Zoning regulations, would that still apply? You know, if my neighbor wants to put a food vendor truck in the driveway. Yeah, that's a that's a drawn out process to get to get a, like a big building in a residential area. That would take a month probably. But but if it no, wanted to put like a, a, a food a truck trash. in the driveway, would that be subject to zoning regulations? You bet. Oh yeah. That'd be a commercial okay. Yeah. That'll be
Um, I talked to Rod um, about whether we did, you know, say we fixed the roof, put a whole new roof on it, and used, which is going to take more than the five thousand dollars that the bank has given us. And I don't know if people all went in there, but you know, say we went in and cleaned out some trees, dead trees, and maybe even went in and pulled the carpet out of underneath and just got it where it smelled decent. Um, and then put a little bit of extra money in if that would be an issue as far as appropriate or not a mismanagement of funds. And he said as long as we were trying to um, keep that asset an asset that I mean to improve it that would be that we're fine. Um, and as far as if, if we wanted to do that and then any you know if we wanted to put it on a sealed bid or an auction with stipulations however we wanted to word them at that point it would be acceptable also. reservations on taking this property. Um, if we put money into this, we, I mean, we're looking at that $5,000 that the uh, bank is uh, willing to give for this. How much? So we're going to be looking at a little excess of that. Um, I'm not sure whether or not we should, uh, as the city should, uh, spend the taxpayer's money on something like this. Uh, not sure how long we would have to hold on to something like this. We could be stuck with it for a little bit. I mean, we have if we had this at a sealed bid, we'd have to definitely put stipulations on, like you said. Well, I agree. I mean, the house to me, the house is in too good a shape just to tear down. It's in the area is, is the houses around it are nice. Yeah, a decent area, very decent. Um, uh, my, but. Granted, for somebody that's that's started and committed, I mean, that's how do you say it? Further along, this would not be a house that you would buy, probably. Right. But for somebody that's moving into town, a new family or something like that, a new job, a starter house. It, it's a very good starter house. It's, there's a lot of potential there. It's definitely not junk. I mean, <clears throat> we're talking probably less than five thousand bucks that we have in it. To reserve, I mean, but if you just put on a roof and just did bare minimum, just to kind of get it where it was, when you walked in there, it didn't smell yeah. like it's been locked up for a year. Yeah. You, know, you know, no air going through. Right. You might even be able to do that just opening the windows and the doors. I don't know. But for that that small amount of money that we would have in it, I don't think that we would be out in it. Yeah, we're not going to be out too much. So. No, I mean, in, in all that, you get that back on the tax roll, and it's it's doing good. I mean, the economic bill, everybody, and, and I know for personal fact, if you try and hire and bring somebody into this community, your biggest downfall is there's no place to live. Yeah, that's true. So, I mean, I'm all in favor of taking this thing and trying to at least get it to where it can be moved into. And, and, and bought and put back on there, but I think there needs to be stipulations on them themselves, right. whether it's by an auction or by, whether it's by sealed bid. I'm not against that. I, like I said, I just have some small reservations on it. I just think we just need to be cautious and just do it smart. So, yeah, I mean, that's what I meant. Yeah, just everybody approve it. I mean, you know, whether you guys, we could just say, you know, we'll do this, but we're only going to take $5,000, we're a maximum of $10,000 and that's five of that would be from the bank or 7,500, whatever you guys wanted to do. Um, and maybe you know, they'll do more. Who knows? Rod, Rod talked, um, I talked to him about doing some, you know, maybe just some general, maybe trying to improve it a little bit. Um, he didn't think that necessarily be the right way to do it, but he didn't, as long as we were trying to preserve that asset, it's not like we're trying to gamble the money, right. taxpayer money. So, 
And, and if we take it and we have $5,000 in it, I don't know how we can get her. I don't, I don't think you have a problem selling the house for five grand to break even, yeah. if nothing else. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, Bob, sure, what do you think? We did it at the industrial site, but it finally came around where we got to use it for it. Yeah, but this ain't something we're going to hold. Right. This is something we're going to get, get a roof put on it. Like I said, maybe go in there. My thought would be just to get, like I said, you know, there's some carpet down there. When I looked at it, I think you went and looked at it. It doesn't look like there's been, been any water in the basement or nothing like that. And there may be mold, I don't know. But a guy could pull that carpet, nothing else bleach it. But, I mean, when we sell it, we're, it needs to be an as-is basis so that, I mean, if we miss something or whatever, but to me, I just think there's some pretty good potential here to, to help the community by doing this and maybe even make a little money in the process. Because most, there, most of the people that are going to probably want that I mean, if the way it is, if you don't do anything with it right now, is they're going to want to do this tear it down. <laughs> and if we were going out and buying this house and then trying to, to preserve it, I would think totally like you. But where we're getting it given to us, you know the other the other option, but like I said, the person that's going to buy it, the, the people that will probably buy that house, will be somebody that wants to just tear it down. The other option is to either give to just turn around and take possession of it and just sell it as is with the five thousand dollars, or you can pocket the five thousand dollars. Well, if you put the roof on, it looks to me like you're going to have twenty four hundred fifty bucks there. Yep, bare minimum. Yeah. Yep. This is just fixing the area that's... No, that's a whole roof. No, that's not a whole roof. Yeah, this is a 16 foot or 19 foot. There off the center section, we're leaking. Approximately 16 foot by 19 foot to move all wood shingles. That's option one, $1,700. Option two is 74 20, 52 for a whole new roof. Tear off two layers of wood shingles, remove all metal flashings, and put a new roof on install all, you can put all in the way from wood? Yep, yep. Okay, I didn't realize New 30 that. pound fill. We've, we've the ice barriers in the valleys. And a 30 year here in the Make it insurable then. Right. I apologize. But, I mean, I don't want to get into the real estate side of it so bad that we got to worry about whether it can be insured because of whether this electric box is right or that one's. So a guy, like I said, I think with a roof on it, I don't see how we can do it. And still maintain a house that, that somebody can live in. I wouldn't be opposed to that, Troy. Uh, but I'd want to put the whole roof on it. And then I would I would really like to see it put the public auction or something immediately. Well, I think either public auction or seal bid. I'd rather see it just go to public on There has to be stipulations put on it no matter how at that point. But the other thing is, I mean, with the public auction, we, we lose all control of it. We want to get rid of it. Right, but what I'm saying is you lose all control at that point, too. Can't do like well, I mean, I don't know that if you go to a public auction, I don't know if you sold it at a public auction, say you wanted to put a stipulation on it that it had to be moved in to the oh, And know. not it's just bought and tore down. Because there's no need to go through all this if if you're just going to have it tore down. You say no storage. We've got houses that Yeah, no storage. Right. Just that we, that we want somebody to live in. It'd have to be. That, that, yeah. that to me is the purpose of doing it. Otherwise, 
Yeah. We don't want to do anything. I agree. And you don't want somebody to bid on it that, I mean, we had some home spot here online that sat and nothing happened to them and they continue to deteriorate. Right. I mean, I, I, I would be saying get the roof fixed and instantly put it up on a sealed bid deal with the stipulation stated and everybody knew them and then you, then you go with your sealed bid. And it, I mean, stated that it is a, as is. I mean, has a new roof, but it's as is. You know, and that that yeah, as is will also eliminate us a lot. It'll eliminate any liability from the carpentry work on the roof or anything else. It releases us of all that, or it should. But like I said, it, it would provide another house in town I that could, that could be lived in. I agree with you. I mean, we've got to have some houses, and, and to me, this is a perfect option. And like I said, and I don't see how we can lose money. If we did this, any money that we put into it, I would like to see us at least recoup that. I mean, if we had oh, yeah. like a minimum, well, that's what if I'm we saying. had a minimum bid, you know, I, I do not believe that we can lose money on it, and we might be able to make some money. Right. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have a problem putting the minimum bid. Right. Yeah. Whatever money we got in. Right. Okay. When you do that. You are you really thinking about going and taking the carpet out? If so, I, don't, what, I, I, I just threw that in there, guys. I, I don't know. But I, mean, I know, to me, if I was think, looking at I, it... I think Troy's right. If we were to open it up and let it air out, you might get rid of any smell that's in there, if any. So. I'm just... You, you walked in there, and you know what you thought when you smelled it. And if, if I was looking at it and was serious about a sealed bid, if it didn't smell like that, it'd be a little more worth it to me. Kevin, what's your thoughts? Oh, I think that your economic development is building housing now. I think I would let them be the real estate owners. I would refuse it. It's just, what do you mean refuse it? I would refuse we can't it. lose on a deal. I would refuse it and let the economic development see what they could do with it. I understand, and I could be. Correct me, Melody, if you interpreted this differently. For them, they have to go through to get their funding and stuff is trying to get some grants and stuff. So it may not be as quickly resolved. Is that how you understand they, that as well? Initially, they should not have the money to do anything with their control. They could at some point have some funds available. If not, Karen told me they, should, they are turning it down. If we refuse it, they might see if they can get something for it, but it's going to be some time and how much they can do with their shit. Can you, you say when the bank, the mortgage company said it's a lot easier for them to do it, for yes, to uh, give it to us, yeah. then it would be through that. Right. The, yeah, they have to become an acceptable, economic development has to become an acceptable municipal, somehow or another, deal that they will grant it to us. They were, we're instantly approved to accept it. So they have to go through a process of application. I agree with Troy. I, you know, I, I don't think see any way we can lose money on it. And if we can get the thing set up and fixed up and get somebody living in it, we got electricity, we got water, and we get taxes. Kids on back in school, maybe. Exactly. Uh, oh. Looking at the dollars and cents of it. How how uh, how deep you want to go into it? I I think the way that I was the way that I was approached or told about it that what we really need that mortgage company is needing something done now as far as whether we're going to take it so they can do that. Um, I mean, if I was to make a motion, like mine would be to go ahead and accept the house and the five thousand dollars cash that comes with it and get the option number two, get the roof put on it. And then at that point, I mean, next meeting we could put it on the agenda to look and see if we, and that maybe give everybody a chance to go through it that hasn't been in it and see what you think. Maybe, no, maybe, maybe, maybe everybody don't want to do nothing and that's as far as we go. And we're in it for $2,452. Open it up for sale. Open it up at that time, or somebody wants to. Everybody can think about it and look at it. And if 
they think maybe doing a little bit here and there would be an asset to that and, and help, then we could do that. So the bank, I mean, we could decide that at a good later time. The bank that currently owns it is giving $5,000. Yes. It's coming with five yeah. thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Or zero. Oh, uh, I wondered where you were coming up with the bank. Yeah. 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 yeah, he was here. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're giving us a house yeah, and five thousand dollars cash towards this new roof. And That's why we're saying we're in it for twenty four hundred bucks. Yeah. They're, just, they're just looking for a tax. Worst scenario, you got twenty four hundred fifty dollars. Right. I mean, to me, there's literally no way to lose. I, I could I, be proved I have wrong. To agree with you, Troy. I, I could be proved wrong. I don't see any reason why the city of St. John shouldn't. I mean, this me, yeah, this is a good opportunity. And I don't think there's a taxpayer out there that would hold that against us doing that, trying to get a house in St. John, Kansas. Well, and like I said, as long as we are trying to improve that asset and make it good for this, you know what I'm saying? It's not gambling. It's, it's not gambling with the money, and, and Rod said we're perfectly right on doing this. Like I said, I don't think we're going to run into anybody that's going right. to have a problem with this. I guess I'll put a motion on the table to accept the house from Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo. And the $5,000 cash to, to go with it. And to go ahead and then as soon as I guess we have everything in line to go ahead and have Mike Sailor's repair put a new roof on it for seven thousand four hundred and fifty two dollars. And anything else to be decided at a later date. I would second that motion. Mr. Smith, do you want to have this done right away when we have it done? That might get Yeah, because if we don't, it's gonna get worse on the inside. You want that all in one motion? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, 
put that clarifier. Right. He has it. He has it. I would add that to the motion. Well, or I can go in and check that email with you guys. But you want to take a little recess. But we're in the middle of the motion, so if you just want to give me a few minutes, I can go in there. I'm going to be for take recess for how many? Five. Five minute recess. <laughs> it's over. I'm back in session. Who made my motion on the other one? On the property? I did. No, on the recess. Uh, Mark and Bob. Disconnect on it. It's up to city code. Okay. Yeah, it is. I went by and looked at it here about a week ago. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. By the motion carried. Okay. We have uh, now we have kids here for the farm ground. Tail end of our river, anyway, so to speak. I mean, it's 
going to go that way. It's not coming in the thing. I'll make a motion to take the high bid. No corn. No corn. They have a sheet. Yeah, yeah, they all read that they sheet. Both, both the bidders saw the specifications. Do I hear a second? Second. No motion. Second. Do we have any further discussion? Full abstains. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Four. Four. Next item I had the soon approval schedule for August. We're ready to do the same thing we see about every year, moving guards. Uh, Jamie sent a schedule of what they're looking at to finish out the rest of the year. Uh, they'll be closed during the week starting August 11th, you know, all, every week until the end of the month. They'll be open on the weekends. That might be as clear as anything. They pretty much have to be always down the bat. Just what the more we run out of people, we run out of people, and that's you know the case. So uh, they will not. The school is going to be using the pool the last week of the month for uh, their PE program. Uh, Jamie's agreed to go ahead and keep the water going and keep the pool clean and all that. I mean her contract runs until you know, the Memorial has that everything from Labor Day weekend. Uh, so. Anyway, and then, but they will not be open that that week. The last weekend they will be open is August twenty third and twenty fourth. But she's going to keep the pool in shape for the next week. So we think for the yes, yeah. they'll be open you know, that weekend right prior to that, and then she'll keep everything in the fall. So forty nine, she will open her last day of. Plus of it is that they will 
according to them, they will, if we're on a contract with them, we have an issue, an argument has to be taken out and sent to the factory, or get moved up to the front of the line. If not, it needs to be in the first cut for services. We can have a tech come out and we'll be able to fix it on the side. So there's pros and cons to that stuff. So that's my report on that. Any questions? No. We've already, we're already signed up for another year on both of them, so we just have a renewal. What was the cost on that renewal? Oh, I think, I don't remember, the, I think it was a couple thousand dollars. Uh, I know it was a little over a thousand, I think, for the nitrate analyzer. That's a two, two trip deal and uh, two trip on the, we do it at the same time as far as on the chlorine analyzer. I think it might have been a little less, but it might have been like $2,200. I don't have it. And as far as I don't know what they were as far as there's, they renew a lot of we call kind of tubing and all kinds of stuff they renew every six months. But like I say, we're already made up to next year and we can we decide then what to do that's that's all I have. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Fire department and police department. Uh, the first thing I have is a uh, request to approval to purchase for a uh, spin over five hundred dollars. I put a, a deal in your packet uh, to replace my body armor as of uh, it expires in October. Uh, the reason I'm asking now is because they're custom made and it usually takes anywhere from a month to or six to twelve weeks for to get it out. Um, the salesman called me today. I'd like to, uh, I guess it depends on how you guys want to do it. That figure, there's a good chance that that figure could go down quite a bit because the company we buy it from is getting ready to uh, contract solely uh, with the Second Chance Corporation. So that could give us some cost savings on that. So, I mean, I know it'll be over $500, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be lower than the, than the $800 figure that's on there. How long so, are they good for? Five years. So I don't know if, if, if you would uh, if you want to wait until I get the exact dollar figure uh, to do that, or if you want to give me approval just to spend over the five hundred. This is kind of stupid, and I don't know. But is there? Can you send like your old ones in to have them recertified or whatever? No, and the reason you can't is because they're. It's kind of hard to explain how they're made. They're, they're basically made with a bunch of woven uh, fabric, okay. and so. When just from sweat and stuff like that, that's what starts to break them down. Okay. Um, well, like I said, I didn't know. Yeah. The, the only thing you can really do with them, the old ones, there's a lot of foreign countries and stuff that will take donations for them. Um, because, I mean, there, there's a really good chance they're still going to work. They're just not guaranteed after that five years because they start to break down. We've, I mean, we've... We yeah, even when I'm doing it, <laughs> if it don't work, what's the guarantee work? <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. That's what, that's what I'm saying. But, so yeah, I mean, there's Is that used in your own option. Well, absolutely. I mean, we right. we shot one five or six years ago that was almost thirty years old, but still stopped the bullet. Now, would I want to take that chance? <laughs> so I mean, it's it, it's up to you guys. I still got a little bit of time. Like I said, they just take a while because they're custom made. So when do you think you're gonna? You'll know what he, the other companies. Do. He actually called me today because he knew I had I had to get the approval for the money. Um, and he said they're going to be doing that within the next week or two. So, but it'll be with this company. It'll be yeah, chief supply. No matter what. No matter what. And errands, we haven't seen errands yet. Yeah. updated. It's shortly behind yours, probably. A year behind. Yeah. And, and that was in Charlie. Well, actually, Charlie's and errands will, will actually be in the same year because Charlie comes up with his five year next year and errands too. And that was the reason we did the budget. I had asked for that extra line item for that, that extra $1,500. Is that, uh, that guarantee or that warranty or whatever you want to say, is it good from the date of purchase or from the date of wear? It's it's good from the date of manufacture. Okay. So what I was saying, if we tried to buy three and get a good deal and just didn't use the other two till next year, 
would it still be good for five years and maybe save no, us money? No, or no, no, it's only good for the data, the warranty okay. for the data manufacturer. Okay. I mean, yeah, that's a good question. That would make sense, but and I don't, I honestly don't know if they would give a break on that small yeah. quantity or not. Over here. Go ahead. No, I'm not to you're answering my question right now. Yep. Yeah, I hear a motion to approve his. I mean, if, if you want to, three forty-six over his five hundred. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to interrupt, but if you want to, I know it won't be more than that. So if you want to up bring to. it up to that, okay. you know, then that would be fine too. So, uh, I second. Uh, do a, I'll make some motion. Mark and Sherry. Yeah. Any other further discussion? How are you saying here? Uh, make a motion to uh, um, approve. To, up to. Eight hundred forty-six dollars and ninety-nine cents for the uh, body armor. Added to that for Adam Sandler from Chief Supply. Right. Okay. Any further discussion? What? Those? What? Uh, is it got a data manufacturer on it? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. The, the inside. What it is is the uh, the panels. What it comes because we we switched to the external carriers, um, but it still comes with like what they call a concealable carrier. And then it's got a, a uh, just basically a placard piece of fabric sewn in the inside of it that has your data manufacturer um, and all the, you know, what size it is, serial number, all the information. What uh, data manufacturing is this going to be? I don't know that. I don't, I mean, that's. I After they make it, they'll send it to you, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah that's a sign. He said they make it to Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you have to send in your measurements because it's all, and that's part of. If you have a vest that doesn't fit, then your ballistic protection isn't what it's supposed to be. So if it's too small or if it's too big, I mean, it's all the way they're designed, they're, they have to be tested and fit each person. Any further discussion? Well, there is no problem. He has the money in his budget for that. Yep. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, the next thing I have, uh, I, I talked to Aaron a couple days ago, um, almost two years ago when he was promoted to sergeant, um, we had discussed um, what his raise would be. Um, when I was promoted to sergeant, the sergeant previous before me both got a dollar an hour raise when they were promoted to sergeant. Um, when he was promoted, he was given a 50 cent raise, and then uh, the council had said that after a uh, probationary period they would discuss the other 50 cents, um, and that has never gotten around to happen. So I wanted to discuss that. Um, you know, it, it wasn't a guaranteed thing. I would request that he would get that in line with, with the previous sergeants that were promoted. Um, and of course, I, you know, if, if we need to look back at the minutes or whatever to, to make sure that's 100% accurate, that's fine. Any further discussion?
it would have been either September or October of 2012. But if you want to give me a few minutes, I can well, try to find it. Or I don't, I don't have an issue with it either. I trust him. I'll move to give him the 50 cent raise as stated. That will be just effective from, from this, today. From the coming pay period. Yeah, yeah, about right. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. The motion carries. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Within, within my report, um, either the Starting the end of this month or the first of next month, we are going to take over the um, bin inspection contract from the sheriff's office, uh, working with Iowa Patrol to do bin inspections. Um, that's going to do a couple things. It's going to help out uh, our couple small car dealers in town because we're basically available to do those at any time instead of just one day, one day and one hour a week. Um, and that's also going to help us out uh, budget wise because we get a certain percentage of the monies. Uh, now it is. Um, they changed the legislation this year that that money is only allowed to go back into law enforcement. It can't go to general fund or anything like that. Um, but that will, let me know if it will help. That's, I'm, I'm interested to see how that's all going to work since law enforcement is part of the general fund. It's just uh, the legis legislation states that it can't be used for anything other than law other enforcement. Other than law enforcement. Right. Okay. Like, what's the dollar amount per I, I think per bid it's like 20 bucks. bucks. I mean, it's not a big amount, but right. at the same time, I mean, we're, we're available to do it, and I, I think it'd be a, a benefit for both of us. That's all I got. Uh, Chief, how are we how, are we still at a standstill with uh, the part-time uh, police officer? We're, yeah, pretty much. I, I, I think the biggest thing, I've, I've had uh, two people call uh, and inquire about it. I think the biggest thing, issue that I've run it into now is People coming up with the money to get the equipment that they need to do the job that, that the police department, the city doesn't provide. That initial um, investment in all of that stuff is, is is a good amount of money. What what is that that we don't provide? I guess um, we don't provide boots. We don't provide the duty belt. We don't provide handcuffs. That's um, well, we're providing best full time right now. That would be a decision. I mean, as an administrator, I wouldn't. I don't know that that would be the best, unless you're going to make somebody sign a contract. I don't. I don't know that that would be a wise idea because of the fact they are specifically made. Uh, you void your warranty and you open yourself up to all kinds of liabilities if you put somebody in a vest that's made for somebody else and it doesn't work. Right. Um, so that would ultimately be a decision, yeah, I think, for, for all of us to make as to whether or not you're going to put that kind of money into a part-time. What does that do to us on the insurance, so if you don't split with that? Well, it doesn't, doesn't do anything on insurance. Now, we're, we're at the end of the grant cycle now. Um, what I'm working on now, still working on our policy manual, is making a mandatory wear policy to where we can get grants to pay for half of our vests in the future. Yeah. Um, so there's a good chance next year with Aaron and Charlie's that we'll be able to get grants to pay. Now we have to pay for them up front and then they reimburse. Right. Um, but that's something we're going to do because you have to have that mandatory wear policy to get the grant funding. Um, so like I said, I mean, it's, that's just what I've discussed with him is there's the potential by the, you know, I mean, you're looking at a, a minimum investment of $1,000 um, to go to work at a part-time job. And, uh, you know, and that's one of the reasons we really try to get somebody certified because typically they already have that. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that'd be out of line having them do, like just you said, a contract, and if they leave before five years, they just buy the best and they put It's going to be defunct in five years anyway. But like you said, getting someone to the ground five years. Part-time situation. And how many hours will they actually use that vest in the Well, yeah, I mean that's you know we haven't we're not at, we're not to the point yet. But without 
actually getting somebody worked in and being able to know and guarantee any amount of dollars. It's just kind of one of those things that's really hard to calculate until you can actually do it. So yeah, I mean, we're still we're still looking, we're still advertising, still trying to get some buying systems. Any other questions for Adam? Well, besides besides that right there, that that's, seems to be the only thing keeping people candidates from coming in and wanting to buy their equipment. Well, you, that's part of it. Um, as I discussed before, we had one that looked really good on paper when I did the background was a disaster. Um, that's an issue too. I mean, I, I, you know, you. I think, I think council, we should consider. We should consider again, full-time officer. I don't know how you feel about it now, but I think we should consider it. I don't know how the rest of you feel. Well, he also stated he was having trouble figuring out how many hours he would let him have. Well, that's 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 a part time. What, what, the reason I'm saying that is because it's not, I can't guarantee, even even if I could guarantee them 20 hours a month, that's not enough to, to do anything. And that, that's what I'm saying. I can't I can't give them enough hours to where they can just have a part-time job and pay the bill. That, that's where I'm coming at with that. Now, obviously, if I have a full-time officer, I can guarantee them a certain amount of hours. But with part-time, they can only work 999 hours a year anyway. Which, if they worked every every hour, that only comes out to four four hours. Something like that. What's everyone else's thought on that? So it's, it's not a question of giving them the hours. It's that by sea posts they can only work so many. Um, and by the time you have a job on top of it, you have your part-time job that makes some extra income, you're limited on what they can come to work in. I mean, my thought would should be looking at trying to do a part-time option. I'm not opposed, though, I mean, if we buy shirts, we buy every other thing, I mean, I don't know, I guess, like the duty bill. I don't know why. I figured we own we own the handcuffs, but we don't. Well, this this is all stuff that's set by policy. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to lightening some of that stuff if it would help us get a part time. I, I'm still. I would still like to see us try to get a part time instead of trying to put a full time on and all. Did you have any? Did you had the one maybe help you out? part-time situation? We have never had anything. Nobody? You've been hired twice, and you've approved twice, but when it came to The other thing, I think you brought it up. Have you talked to like Stafford or Maxfield to see if we could, if they could also use the part-time to where you could, that person could maybe work for, say, all three departments yeah. and, and have enough hours in it to where it would really just, it would Justified on their part, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, well, you st they still can't, even that way, they still can't work beyond a thousand hours. Um, well, total or per, right. per unit per year? That's that, that's because it's based for on us. their. For, well, for no, for anybody, because it's based on their certification. Because a part-time officer only goes to school for two weeks or two, yeah, two weeks, which is basically a qualified with your firearm, doing a little bit of criminal law. So even even if they were, it's certification based, not employee. -based. Okay, you see, what, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. But, so, he's, yeah. but he's, I think he's going towards the full-time officer for the officer. He's just not going to be here all the time. Yeah. Well, then, then you're going to then you're gonna have the inviting which agency is going to... They have to be hired full-time by an agency to go to the academy. You can't say, I work sometimes here and sometimes here and sometimes here. You can't be Redicom. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they actually have to be classified as a full-time employee, and that's, that's part of the certification. I see. And, uh, the, the last one that went to Stafford, that was kind of the idea. He was hoping that he would be able to help out everybody. But mm -hmm. obviously, he got offered full time and he was crazy enough to turn that down. So, if there was somebody already certified through the academy, 
Can't they actually work for two different departments and have as long as they 40 hours a week split between two departments? Well, yeah. I mean, like I said, your 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 part and full time is depends on your certification and how long you went to the academy. So. Yeah, I mean, if, if somebody wanted to hire somebody and put them at a full-time status and, and pay them that 14 weeks to go to school, like the county would hire them and do all the waves, and then and then and then after they got schedule at Maxville for a Saturday Sunday, right? right? After they got their full-time certified, and then they wanted to say, "Sorry, we're cutting you down to whatever hours." But the problem with that is, if you hire somebody full-time, they're looking for benefits, and they're going to get gun shy if they know that their hours are going to be cut back because then legally benefits don't have to be right. you, so, so you could ask Paul and the Stafford Max if they were interested in anything like that. I'm sure I, I that, that's one of the issues we had with a couple of Stafford officers that want to work part time over here. It's the chief over there who didn't like that idea and in fact kind of jumped on me because he thought I was stealing his officer. Of course then I had one one over here and that's where they are. Keep that on your mind, everybody. Any other questions for Adam? Uh, John? Yes, and you know, I would like to entertain a motion for the approval of the 2015 budget. Second. Any uh, further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carried. And the only other thing I had is if you guys um, opened your journals, your government journals from the last time, I think. Um, or maybe they were in your packets, I'm not sure, really. But this was in there and this is the conference <coughs> coming up October 11th through 13th which is the same time that Amy and um, Grayson was talking we're talking about that we get to do the uh, entrance but there are some things in here that might interest you and so it's in Wichita this year so it's a lot closer than the uh, Bowen Park or where's the El Tanika that's they re rotate on the so um, I encourage you to look at these and give me a, a, a call if you want me to get you registered or whatever. Um, there is a late registration fee. It goes up a little bit. So be important if you're thinking about going. I think September 26th is the last, is the, when we have to add the late fee. So you can go for just a portion or... Uh, they also have some pre-conference classes for your LKM core subjects. So if, I just encourage you to look at that. If you don't have it, this one, I can make copies or whatever. It's also on the website. Thank you. Any questions for Delona? Department supervisors report. That's the only thing I have is I'd just like to meet with the council a few minutes. Non elected, 10 minutes. Yes, please. Uh, it would be, it would be uh, uh, end of uh, probation.
Justin Clawson's six year six, six month or six month trial period is up and he is evaluated for rates. I hear the motion. For uh, so give him a two dollar an hour wage increase. Did I hear a second? Second. Any other further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. No. I'm sorry, he did the second. Pardon. That's all I have. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. I had a, we had an offer there from Grayson Collins. They were looking for two elected officials. They want three if you can't do that. I already made yeah. motion to adjourn. Two elected officials would like to be on their committee for three months. It's only two months almost. Mm -hmm. uh, are you one of them? Uh, can be. I don't know. Now until October, isn't it? I guess I'll step up to the plate on this one. I buried everybody else in that process. How did I hope that you believe? We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. To adjourn. All those in favor say aye. Aye. aye.